So fresh back from West Palm Beach, Florida, was down there in that area, and I just happened to drive by Palm Beach. I wanted to see A1A. I loved looking at the ocean and driving uh, by the ocean. So on the way down, we ended up in Palm Beach, and man, oh man, the traffic, the traffic in Palm Beach is absolutely insane. And I can't say that it's all about Trump because Worth Avenue was crowded, everything was crowded. It's almost like they've got two lane roads that really should be four lane roads. And it's just insane. Luckily, as I was driving south past Mar a Lago, somebody in a Bentley allowed me to make a right hand turn. Usually, right hand turns are easy, right? You just, you know, make a right hand turn far easier than a left hand turn. But somebody actually had to slow down after sitting there for about two or three minutes, just a steady stream of cars. Insane. I don't know how anybody can live there, to be honest with you folks. But today I wanted to cover a few different subjects and the crazy, the crazy that I see in some of these things, touching on them very briefly. They've got something called, I want to show you this, they've got something called the Baby Olivia video now. So in North Dakota, the legislature has mandated, thoroughly mandated, that students have to watch this video, which is a, a lot more like propaganda really than it's it's like an anti-abortion propaganda video that they say really isn't political but it is you know of course that's how it always works but take a look at this folks so ultimately in north dakota they've mandated that all students need to see this and they the legislatures in iowa west virginia kentucky and missouri are considering the same action that all students have to watch this video and what one of the things in the video is it asserts that a new human being has come into existence at the moment of fertilization. Okay, that, that's interesting. Interesting concept there. And that three weeks and one day later, a heartbeat can be detected, which I'm not a doctor. I don't know about that myself. And then it goes on to say that 11 weeks after fertilization, this is a real cherry on the Sunday here, Olivia is playing and exploring her environment in utero. In the uterus, she's playing and exploring. What? What? And that 20 weeks after fertilization, some babies have survived outside the womb. Some. But I, I just would love to see the video there. Olivia is playing and exploring her environment in utero. What? Come on. This, this is ridiculous. Hey, the group that's responsible for this, folks, is called Live Action. And, you know, I'd love to see that video of Olivia playing and exploring her environment. I mean, this is just insane. It goes hand in hand with what the Alabama Supreme Court just recently came out and said, right? That, that frozen embryos are people, which is news to me, really. I mean, so now we've got ice children, right? Ice children. We have to worry about the rights of frozen embryos uh, or whatever ice children now are a concern. And there's only one person that I, I can remember in my long and sordid history as a human being that was frozen and actually came back to life. Back in the 80s or 90s, there was this one lady somewhere up in the Midwest. She had car trouble. It was negative, dropped to negative 22 that night, that fateful night. And she froze literally with her eyes open. And by some miracle, she managed to come back to life. And I say miracle because modern science has not been able to replicate that on a, on a sure and steady basis to where freezing people and bringing them back to life is something that, that we do. So it's, uh, it's just insane, folks, where all this is going. And, and it, it, altogether, it really makes the Republicans look foolish uh, it, it makes them look like they're constantly overreaching for, for political reasons. And it's out of control, and they're radical, and they've, they've got to be stopped. They've got to be stopped, really. So secondly, folks, I want to show you this. So um, the, the immunity claim, we just heard this morning on Morning Joe, the immunity claim is going to be heard by the Supreme Court who, by, by virtue of the fact that they said they're not going to hear it until June or July, is actually granting Trump immunity till then. So Jack Smith's case, the whole entire thing is on hold 
while they spin their wheels, of course, right? And they call them seam, or SEAL Team 6, right? The Supreme Court justices, because six of them are largely the result of Mitch McConnell and uh, Trump appointments, right? SEAL Team 6 to the rescue for Donald Trump. So take a look at this. Um, consider this, folks. So you've got Biden and Trump both going to the border today. <laughs> that work out. Both of them going to different parts of the border. It'd be neat to see them together, wouldn't it? You know, let's do this together. They're going to the border to talk about immigration. Now, this is this is on the heels of that decision where Biden had a bipartisan deal that would actually restrict immigration almost instantly today, right? And Trump shot it down in favor of something that he's going to do maybe a year later down the road, maybe if he gets elected. Um, insane to to pass up something that could be done today in favor of something that might happen a year later. But take a look at this graphic. I got to show you this. Okay, so take a look at this graphic. So the blue is a U.S. born citizen. The red sort of brick color is a legal immigrant. And the green olive color is an undocumented immigrant. And just take a look at this, folks. Now, this study is over six years, <clears throat> 2012 to 2018. And the source of this is the Texas CCH, of all things, the Texas CCH. Now, the gist of this, folks, is that U.S.-born citizens are committing murder 252% more than undocumented immigrants. 252% more. You mean to tell me that immigrants are far more law-abiding than U.S. citizens? Yes. That's, that's what it's telling us. So don't listen to the GOP. Don't listen to Donald Trump when he's out there telling you that these people are evil. They're, they're gangsters. They're coming over here to wreak havoc. Because six years of data shows that that's clearly not the case. Clearly not the case. I mean, it's amazing to me, folks. It, um, part of the myth and the legend of Donald Trump is perpetuating those types of lies. And, and here's the reality of what immigrants are really, what, what they're doing. And, and the reality is shocking. 252% more murders are being committed by U.S. citizens than immigrate, immigrants. I mean, it's, it's mind-boggling, folks. Absolutely mind-boggling. So the other thing I want to show you is this. Take a look at this, folks. Take a look at um, the Hunter Biden situation. So yesterday, as you know, Hunter Biden was brought into deposition and um, he's, he's being deposed by people like Comer and all these other uh, congressmen and congresswomen that are just eager for a story that's anti-Biden. Well, they got him in there and he drew, Hunter Biden drew the distinction between what he has done in a business world with independent businessmen versus foreign governments, which he did not do any business with, unlike Jared Kushner. And consider Kushner folks who oversaw Middle East policy in the Trump White House, and he raised plenty of eyebrows when he secured a $2 billion investment from Saudi Arabia no less than six months after leaving public service. $2 billion investment from Saudi Arabia. Now that's grift. That, that is the definition of grift. And get this, folks. When Hunter Biden was deposed, he invoked the Fifth Amendment zero times. He answered every question. Contrast that with Jared Kushner, folks. And how many times do you think he invoked the Fifth Amendment? How many times? 500 times. 500 times. You can't tell me he's got nothing to hide when you sit there and invoke the Fifth Amendment 500 times. How do you do that? I mean, how? How do you do that? I mean, it's it's just insane, the griff, the level of griff. So they're going after, they're, they're trying to go after Hunter Biden uh, for, the, for this pittance compared to $2 billion that Kushner ran away with with that deal in his back pocket from Saudi Arabia. Unbelievable, folks. So I want to show you this. Take a look at this. So 
Trump is out there. He's He's been sort of embarrassed by Biden, who was on Seth Meyers' show. Uh, and Biden made a crack that he couldn't even remember Melania's name on that show. And it's just going to get worse and worse. But here's the the Biden camp put together this little this little montage that's really interesting. And I want to tune out with this. So have a look at this video, folks. Hilarious. And he talked about Donald Trump and his wife. I don't know the name of my wife. Wife, our great first lady. She was a great first. People loved her. Loved her. Hey, look at that. Wow. Wow. Mercedes, that's pretty good. <laughs> when I use Barack Hussein Obama mm -hmm. and I interject him into where it's supposed to be right. Biden. They uh, were interviewing him two weeks ago and they said, uh, what would you advise President Obama? To? And I do it purposely for oh. comedic reasons and for sarcasm. For Sarcasm. Obama wants to, he doesn't want to talk about it. Well, you mean President Biden. So uh, say, oh, I don't know the name of the president. Mm. Or when I imitate this guy getting off a stage, what easy. they do is they say, oh, he had trouble easy, getting easy. off a stage. I have no trouble getting off a stage. But, Anybody no, that watches no. what I do at rallies would say, wow, that's amazing. You wow. Go two hours without a teleprompter, not making even a little mistake. Little one. For an institute and a powerful death penalty. We will put this on like Nikki Haley. Yes. She's in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. Very That's few news. people. Maybe almost nobody can do what I do. You got to take a look at the other guy. He's about as old as I am, but he can't even remember his wife's name. Yeah. And, uh... Sad, isn't it, folks? It's sad, and it's just going to get worse. <sighs> Till next time. Thanks for watching.